What's up, everyone? It's your boy Nornrad89 here, and today we're going to be ranking all the MCU films 23 leading up to Black Widow. That's going to be coming out pretty soon. So today you're going to kind of see my list and my like how my feeling is on all the films that have been out so far. Like I said, Marvel, it's definitely a huge universe. It's been quite an enjoyable ride for sure. So let's get down to this ranking. Roll it. So we have 23 MCU films to get through, and this is just my list, my personal opinion. So this isn't the right list. I would love to hear from all of you. So share in the comment section your list of all the films that you've seen of the ones, or if you've seen all 23, let me know your ranking. I would love to hear from all of you. So let's kick this off. Coming in at number 23 for me is going to be Thor 2, the Thor Dark World film. It's definitely a very unforgettable film. I still think at this point Chris Hemsworth was still kind of developing that Thor character and they didn't really know where they wanted to go with that universe. It was supposed to be this really heavy dark film compared to the first one and I think it's just a lackluster villain and the story is nothing that special at all. Coming in at number 22 is going to be Iron Man 3. This was definitely one that fell very short for most fans and for me especially because I'm a huge Tony Stark Iron Man fan. He's one of my top favorite superheroes in like a comic ever and in the films and like in this one was just oh, it just was such a letdown especially the way they did that kind of twist on the Mandarin character. I didn't really appreciate that and it just was a film that I felt like Robert Downey Jr. This was the one that I felt like I didn't really even like seeing him as Tony. It kind of felt like he was just walking into this one. They were just like, let's get this one done and move on to the next stuff because this Iron Man stuff is over with, you know. Coming in at number 21 is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And this one, oh man, I was highly expecting this one to be an amazing film, especially after what James Gunn did with that first one. It was a great surprise, that first film. But this second film was probably the biggest disappointment that I've had out of these films, especially in the theaters. Like, out of these films, in the theaters, this was the biggest letdown for me. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has a horrible plot, probably the worst pacing out of all the films on this list, for real. And I just didn't like um, Kurt Russell as the villain. Like, he's just such a bland, like, evil villain, and just his lines are horrible. It's probably one of my least favorite characters that he's been in a movie, for sure. Number 20 is going to be Thor. The first film from him is his first spin-off like side film. Thor is just one of those characters. I don't I like him better in like the actual Avengers films or like other movies, but like his standalone movies just aren't that strong at all. And I think still this first film Marvel was still trying to figure out what they wanted these films to be like. So there was a lot of experimenting going on and I still think Chris Hemsworth was still really young as an actor and you can really tell he didn't ha he didn't hadn't developed that style for Thor yet you know that really Thor that we love in the later films number 19 is going to be Spider-Man Far From Home and oh man the Spider-Man films these newer ones I like they they have let me down for sure I'm just not a big fan of the newer Spider-Man films I was really on board with Andrew Garfield when they did Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 but these ones like Far From Home this is the least like a Spider-Man movie that I've ever seen. Like it's really got, it's so focused on Tony Stark. It's like they don't want to even let him die really. You know, because this takes place after Endgame and they really don't even want to let his character die. Like the whole thing is like we got this storyline of, you know, Peter wondering like, oh, can I be the new Tony Stark or can I just enjoy my life and be a kid? It's just not the Spider-Man film I wanted. I don't like that many characters in these films, the new Spider-Man ones. And I didn't really appreciate Jake Gyllenhaal's villain, like his version of Mysterio. It was like he's a good actor, but I think just the content that he was given was just bad. Like this, this is like I said is just a bad spider-man movie to me number 18 is going to be captain america the first avenger and this is a film that uh, it, i can find some nostalgia in it when i watch it there are some things i do like about this film like you know the period piece setting 
the production design is really top notch in this film, but just the overall story and like the way it goes and like the pacing and then getting into that third act when he's fighting Red Skull, it just doesn't have a lot of oomph to it. You know what I mean? It doesn't pay off that much. It has kind of a cool setup, you know, when he wakes up in the Newton hour time now. So it's like, it is, like I said, a movie that I can rewatch because I have some nostalgic love for it, but I still think it's not that good of a film. It was still Marvel kind of finding their footing and really developing the style of the films that we later do really love that are kind of like eights nines and tens and stuff like that number 17 is going to be spider-man homecoming and like i said before i'm not a huge fan of the newer spider-man films at all but i think spider-man homecoming is better than uh, far from home i just like michael keaton's villain as vulture i think he's a better villain for this spider-man and i think they portrayed him pretty good in the film i just still don't like spider-man i don't like the techie suit i'm really not into that like it just seems like it seems like constantly they're trying to set him up as being like Iron Lad, like the next Iron Man or Iron Lad or something. And he has all this techie stuff. And it's like, I didn't want any of that from Spider-Man. And I don't believe him when he's like having those roles of like acting smart and saying things that are really intelligent. Like, it's just not believable to me like it was when Andrew Garfield did it. Number 16 for me is going to be Iron Man 2, the sequel to the really, really popular film that kind of kicked off the whole MCU like franchise. Iron Man 2, I think I really do have some love for this film because I do like the Tony Stark character a lot. He's one of my favorites, like I've said. And just this one, it's so good. Like a lot of people talk crap about Mickey Rourke, but I think they did Mickey Rourke pretty good in this film, Whiplash. They didn't give him a lot of lines or a lot of things to do like that. But the scenes that he has, he's it's very potent, and you can really feel his character on screen. Add to that, we got Sam Rockwell playing Justin Hammer. Like he's a great charismatic actor. Like there's just so much good stuff in this film. The way that Robert Downey Jr. plays off of Pepper Potts, like and Gwyneth Paltrow, like their chemistry is great too. Like this is just one of those films. Like I said, that I think that. That people talk crap about it and they don't really see the heart of this film. Yeah, it has a lot to do with setting up Avengers and all that stuff, but I still think the Iron Man sequel has a lot to it and really has a good heart story for Tony Stark and really discovering like who he is and finding amends with his father and a lot of things like that. Number 15 is going to be Ant-Man and Wasp. This was the sequel to the Ant-Man film. This one was definitely a fun ride for sure. This is probably the most lighthearted film of all the films on this list. And it's just one of those films that you can go into and you don't have to worry about like high stakes things going on. The world being in danger or people about to die or anything like that. Like this is just one of those films like you can kind of just enjoy it for what it is. And like enjoy this kind of Chase MacGuffin type story thing you know. And watching these bad guys, I, I do like Ghost and the way they try to like make us empathize and understand her character. So there's a lot of good things to this film. And it was a really good sequel to Ant-Man. Number 14 is going to be The Incredible Hulk. And I really do have a passionate love for this film. When I saw this film back in the day, I really did like this film. I think this one came out right after Iron Man. I think Iron Man came out first and then Incredible Hulk was not too long after. But Incredible Hulk is still like, I think this one, I just wish we got Edward Norton as the Hulk. Like I do... I did find a way to grow into liking Mark Ruffalo, but Edward Norton was my Hulk. I think he did the character Bruce Banner the best and like Jennifer Connelly in this one, Tim Roth as Abomination, like Tim Blake Nelson's in this movie too. Like it's got such a great cast. I think it's a very simple story. If anything that I can say about this film is it does play it very safe in terms of like, you know, when we see like a lot of the stuff that happens in the MCU later, like this film does play it very safe. But I think in all essence this is a very good well put together film with a solid cast and i do have a love for this movie number 13 is going to be ant-man and this was one of the films like when this film was first announced and they found out paul rudd was going to be the actor playing scott lang and all that kind of stuff and they announced the rest of the cast i was kind of like I wasn't on board. I wasn't on board with Ant-Man when they first announced it. But then when I saw this movie, I didn't even go see this movie in theaters. I waited for it to come out, like to rent on the TV or in the or like rent on DVD or something like that. But oh man, like it this one did surprise me for sure. Paul Rudd was like perfect for this cat for this role, like as the casting. And this film has such a good heart to it because it's about him trying to 
be that father that he really wants to be for his daughter and like it doesn't matter what he what he does like she sees him as this hero you know what I mean so then he has to realize like it's not even about how his daughter sees him it's about how he's gonna see himself and what he's gonna put out into the world as an example for her because she's gonna view everything that he does as right so it's oh it's such a powerful story and i really did enjoy this film like i said this was a glorious surprise for me in terms of mcu films number 12 is going to be avengers age of ultron and this is pretty this is a pretty good film too a lot of people do talk down about this film because it does have a lot of content in this film it's very side plot heavy there's a lot of stuff going on in this film and you kind of kind you can kind of get lost in the storyline but in in the essence like i think this film has a pretty good dark story to it it's a little heavier than like some of the other content films that we have on this list but I like the way James Spader voiced Ultron, you know, I just didn't like the origin of Ultron, I wish they would have stuck more to the comic ones, but we didn't meet Hank Pym yet, and that we knew that wasn't the Ant-Man that we were gonna get, because he, you know, he makes him in the comics, so they kind of twisted it and did a little bit different version, but I still did appreciate the swing that they gave for this film, even though they didn't knock it out of the park, I still think this is a pretty solid film, I do like the introduction of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, I think they picked some good actors for them, and like I said this is just another good film that I had a blast with especially in the theaters number 11 is going to be Black Panther and definitely Wakanda forever this is definitely a amazing film it's so just atmospheric this film they really built a world for Wakanda and like oh Chadwick Boseman like rest in peace does such an amazing job as Black Panther like the and the cast like and even Killmonger like Michael B. Jordan is probably one of the most the best more three-dimensional villains that we've had in the MCU and like I said Black Panther is just such an atmospheric great film with a lot of production design and they put a lot of effort into making this film and you can really tell the writers and the directors really did try to put the best film Black Panther film they could on screen in here and it was like oh it came out to be such an amazing movie for sure I thoroughly enjoyed this film. The only thing that kind of holds it back from being out of the top 10 for me is that there is some kind of lackluster fighting scenes in this film and like just like things like the CGI that I thought was kind of not as good and we had previous Marvel films before that that had better CGI. So that's why that this one didn't really make it into the top 10, but it did come very close. So now we're here at the top 10. If you haven't yet, drop a like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out. It definitely helps out the channel. So my number 10 pick, kicking it off, is going to be the very first Avengers film. The first ensemble cast, seeing them all together. This was kind of the film that really did set the template for a lot of the other Avenger movies after that. I think this film does a great job of really introducing all the characters that we love into a film. We get Loki as the villain, and he does a very good job of being a menacing villain in this film, you know what I mean? He's very engaging, and he's charismatic, all the scenes that they have. My only problem with this film a little bit is there there is a middle part in the middle when they're all stuck on the helicarrier that it, it kind of takes away from the film a little bit. It takes a long time. I think they could trim like a good 10 minutes out of that middle part and it would even tighten the film up better and this would be a little bit higher up on the list even more. But still, I think the Avengers film was a blast to see in theaters. I will never forget it. And like I said, it, it hit this top 10 spot. I still do rewatch this film and thoroughly enjoy the Avengers. Number nine for me is going to be Thor Ragnarok. And finally, someone in the Thor franchise, they actually nailed a film in the Thor franchise because those first two are way down on the bottom of the list for me, like films that I do not return to or enjoy at all. And Thor Ragnarok is what I wanted from the Thor films. It's colorful. It has so much spirit, so much heart to it. We have a great villain in Hela. She's probably one of the greatest MCU villains that we've had. And we see like a really good uh, chemistry between Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth in this film like as Thor and Loki I really did like this film for sure and Hulk and all the side characters like being in it like they just they just did such a good job of balancing the comedy the action but also having just that perfect amount of motion in it of heart and seriousness that this film did pack a punch and like I said this is definitely easily the best Thor film out there 
Number eight for me is going to be Doctor Strange. Oh, man, this one was... Th I didn't get a chance to check out this one in theaters. I had to wait for this one to be on the TV to order. But I still did have a great time with Doctor Strange. Like, we do have kind of a weak, lackluster villain, but... Oh, man, like, all the visuals in this film are amazing. The way they display the powers, like, oh, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know what I mean, as Doctor Strange, like, he just is such the perfect actor, I think, for this role. They really nailed this one for sure. Almost just as good as Robert Downey Jr.'s casting for Iron Man. So I, I had a blast with this whole entire movie. It really did set up that mystical realm for the MCU and really did build a new world for us. And I can't wait to see Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. Number seven for me is going to be Captain Marvel. And yes, I might be a little bit biased on this one because I'm a huge Captain Marvel fan. She is my favorite female superhero, even from before she was named Captain Marvel because that's not her original character name from back in the day. And they changed her origin a little bit in this movie. And that was like my only really problem with this film. But everything else, like in terms of the acting, the 90s feel to it, the comedy in it, I really did like that buddy cop aspect with Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson. They did a really good job. The de-aging effects on Samuel Jackson are some of the best that I've ever seen. Like This film, I think, is just a really good film. I think this is Marvel when they were in full swing and they knew exactly what the formula was for their films. And they it might, it might be playing it a little safe, you know, this film, but it, it is still MCU in their full swing. They know their formula, and they know they're going to put out a film, and we're going to eat it up like candy. And I still think Captain Marvel is an amazing film. I have a blast with this film. I've rewatched this film like six or seven times already, and I enjoy it every single time. And number six for me is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. This is probably another one that was kind of like Ant-Man for me. That was one of the biggest surprises in the MCU. I saw the trailers for this film and I was expecting it to be good, but I didn't really think it was going to be that good. This is such a great ensemble cast and just interesting characters that I really didn't think would work on a live action screen and James Gunn really found a way to bring these characters to life and sink us into a story that is so interesting and we get so involved as these outcasts join together to become this ragtag team and you know have to save the galaxy it's just oh it's it's really good and every character has their own unique things and stuff about them that you do love and you could actually kind of like you know, sympathize or empathize with them. You could feel with them. You could laugh with them. You can cry with them. Like, it's just these characters are characters that you want to experience things with. And that's what's amazing what James Gunn did is he treated the characters with a great amount of respect and put them in a story that was just so much, like, just so interesting and the perfect place for them. And I really did like this film. Like I said, one of the biggest surprises for me in the MCU. So now we're here at the top five, and my number five pick is going to be Iron Man, the film that really did first put out the formula and template for what was going to be the MCU that we know to be today. Oh, man, like Robert Downey Jr. casted as Tony Stark is was the perfect, like, I mean, I've said that a lot with the perfect casting. They've nailed it down like a few times in the MCU perfect casting in some of these aspects all over the board you know and Robert Downey Jr. was that really key one because he is kind of the heart and the center of the MCU like a lot of these films like a lot of these films have to deal with villains that either hate Tony Stark or villains that are created by Tony Stark or some aspect of Tony is involved in these movies like he is everywhere he is literally the key and heart of these films so oh man Iron Man this first film like even the graphics were so ahead of their time and very unique and amazing and like oh man like it's just some like it's one of those films that like when you watch it it does make you feel kind of like younger again, like that f early time of watching the MCU and you're like, dang, just to think like how years from now there would be 23 films going into 24 with Black Widow coming out and Iron Man started it all. And like when I watch that film, it's just such a glorious like gem of history and I really do love it. Number four for me is going to be Endgame. And I know this might be a little bit controversial putting it this low on the list. I mean, four is pretty high, but I've seen most people's list and Endgame is like number three or number one or number two. But number four for me is Endgame. And like the, the only reason it's not in the top three is because I think the other three that you'll see on my list, I think are better 
complete films story wise everything like those are 10 out of 10s this film's probably an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10 this is a really good film end game don't get me wrong it's got a lot of great emotional moments it is it does something that's never been thought of in film before and tying this universe and like kind of end capping a huge chapter of the universe like it's just a really interesting film that's like you know what i mean it has that epic nature to it it's always going to have that, you know, notch above some of these other films because it had something major to do compared to these other films. But I think there's a lot of fan service in this film, and I think there is some plot holes in this film. And they do kind of bother me. Like, as I watch it, I've, I've seen Endgame three times, and as I watch it, they do stick out a little bit more sometimes. So I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to watch it again because sometimes, like I said, the plot holes, they do stick out. And I think these other three films above this are just more complete, better films that I got more emotionally attached to. And I think the characters, the writing, the directing, the cinematography, all of it is a lot better. And Endgame also ha does have a lot of CGI. It's very CGI heavy, and it's to be expected, you know, because we got like a lot of locales, a lot of places they go, time traveling, all these things. But like I said, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of CGI. I really do like more practical effects. So there's just, there's just a couple things hindering this film from being in that top three. And that's why it's sitting here at this number four spot. And here we are at the top three, and these three films, all of these are hard tens in my book. I love these films. I think they're perfect, even for their flaws or even little flaws that they do have. I love these films, no matter what. And my number three film is going to be the Captain America Winter Soldier film. Oh, damn. Like, they did my boy Winter Soldier right, because for real. Like, uh, Bucky Barnes, like, when they brought him back and they did this Winter Soldier character, this is such a good film because it's so different. From that first Captain America film. This is like a hardcore spy thriller film on the run, you know, being hunted. Captain America and Black Widow are, you know, like Nick Fury almost gets assassinated. Everybody thinks he's dead and they have to go on the run to find out information. You know, Winter Soldier's hunting them. So Hydra's infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. Like this is such a great movie. Robert Redford's in this movie. It's got a lot of good side characters. I think the Hydra villains are really good in this film and they do a perfect job, you know, of trans translating that infiltration aspect of like hiding a shield for years and thinking you can trust these people and then they backstab you like oh man winter soldier is just a blast some of the best fight choreography that i've ever seen in a movie ever like that they, they just did this movie all kinds of perfect and that's why i like this movie number two for me is going to be infinity war and oh man infinity war this is probably, out of all the films on this list, I think Infinity War is probably the most emotionally heavy. Like, even though we have some pretty crazy deaths in Endgame and there's a lot of major stuff that happens in Endgame, I think Infinity War is the movie out of all these films on this list that packs the best emotional punch and will really get those tears from you, especially with the fact that it ends on the sour note of, like, our heroes losing. Like, we actually, like, witness them losing and people getting blipped off of this earth like Thanos wins like it's just oh man like he he gets away with some nasty stuff in this film and I really did like it you know like that scene when Loki he kills Loki in front of Thor like oh man this film is just it's really good like Infinity War was that one where I was like I, didn't, I might not even need it Endgame. Like, yeah, they needed to do Endgame because they needed to tie things up but Infinity War was so perfect that if they decided to just, oh, we're dropping the MCU right now, like it's just done, Gosh, I would have been happy with that. I would have gave them respect for ending a, a series or a franchise thing like that. Like, and then, yeah, you could have done fandom stuff after that, but still, oh, man. Like, Infinity War is just one of those films. Like I said, I like all the action scenes. All the scenes are tense. I like the return of Captain America when they have to fight for Vision and Scarlet Witch and protect them from Proxima and Cole. Like, it's just, it's really got all these great moments. And I think the fight scene at the end is probably one of the best when they're fighting at Wakanda and all that kind of stuff and setting up for the invasion. Like, this is just a really powerful film. I do love Infinity War for sure. So now we're here at number one, the top dog, and my favorite MCU film is Captain America Civil War. 
definitely for me, I think Civil War is the best MCU film. I think this is the most complete hard 10 of these films, has the best choreography, cinematography, the best live action, like, you know, fight choreography scenes, coupled with amazing CGI. It's that perfect marriage that you really love, and that's why I appreciate this film. Also, we have some emotional performances from all the actors in this movie, and this was one of the ones that I got emotionally invested in, definitely the heaviest. Even though Infinity War has a big emotional punch with that ending scene of everybody being blipped off, but this one, having the Avengers torn apart by Baron Zemo, you know, methodically ripping them apart without even, like, you know, actually physically fighting them, you know, he rips them apart by using their morals and ideals and values to, like, get to them and all that kind of stuff. It's such a grip and emotional movie and I think Civil War does the best job of like showing the real life effects of being like the Avengers and what they do and how it affects the world and how it affects the team this is like the most realistic and I really did appreciate like the introduction of Black Panther Spider-Man I actually do like Spider-Man in this movie I didn't like the solo films they did for Spider-Man but I like the way they used Peter Parker in this movie I think he was really well done in this movie for sure and like I said Civil War is just like when I saw this one in theaters it was for me pack the best emotional punch and I have the most fun with this one I've probably seen this one like 15 to 17 times and every time I watch this movie it's just a blast like I said I have this poster right here you can see that this film I think is hardcore my favorite of the MCU the best a 10 out of 10 Thanks for sticking around with me all for these 23 MCU films. It's been a blast. I hope you enjoyed this ranking video. As I said before, share your list in the comment section. I would love to hear from all of you so we could have some cinema debates about what our MCU films are like and which ones we love. And what about Black Widow? Are you excited for that film? Let me know as well. And definitely stick to the channel. Drop a like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay notified whenever I post videos. Have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.